When you talk about black history and baseball, the great Jackie Robinson is often the first person who comes to mind. And that's because he broke the game's color barrier, opening the game to an entire community that had been kept out. But here in Cleveland, another player walked through that open door two years later, bringing Latino players into the fold. In this News 5 original, Kevin Berry explains how the Cuban comment, Minnie Minoso, is finally getting his curtain call. Growing up, it took a while for Charlie Rice Minoso to realize his dad wasn't quite like the other dads. I always just thought it was, you know, just dad going to work. I mean, he was an extremely humble guy and he was from a ranch in Cuba. That work had him traveling the country and North America as an ambassador for baseball long after the prime of Minnie Minoso's career. Very Bob simple. Kendrick at the Negro Leagues yeah, Museum I'm says sure. Minnie was great at it. Once you met Minnie, you just fell in love with Minnie. He had an energy, a charisma that was so very infectious. Which is even more impressive because of what he faced just to play the game he loved. Minnie started in the Negro Leagues because in 1946, that was the only place where he could play in the United States. And here's Minnie coming from another country, speaking an entirely different language, having to adjust from uh, his native homeland of Cuba to life in the Negro Leagues being called the N-word when he had no idea what the N-word even meant. The next year, Minoso won the Negro Leagues World Series, beating the Cleveland Buckeyes at League Park to clinch the title. But a few months earlier, Jackie Robinson became the first black player to wear a major league uniform, and two years later, Minnie would be the first Latino player to do the same thing, right here in Cleveland. These athletes were literally carrying the weight of a race of people, and in Minnie's case, a race of two people. But through it all, here is Minnie with that beautiful smile, that joyous energy that he took to the field. Seven decades later, about a quarter of Major League Baseball's players are Latino, including the only modern era Hall of Fame inductee this year, David Ortiz, who was born in the Dominican Republic. Charlie says that connection isn't lost on his family. He would just be very proud of, you know, the fact he was able to open doors and to um, you know, be the first for many and inspire many. The irony is the doors to the Hall of Fame stayed closed to Minnie while he was still alive. Minnie Minoso wanted to be in the National Baseball Hall of Fame, and he deserved to be in the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Kendrick says his stats and the role he played breaking down barriers should have made Minnie Minoso a lock. Baseball players and historians lobbied for the Cuban Comet, but Minoso died in 2015, still on the outside looking in. The Golden Days era committee decided this year to change that, inducting Minnie Minoso right alongside Negro League stars Buck O'Neill and fellow Cuban Tony Oliva. His life work, his life dream is, is being realized. We only wish that he were still here to, to see it. In Cleveland, I'm Kevin Barry, News 5. Finally getting his flowers. I just wish he was here to see it. Absolutely.